Atención, Mariles, para que tengan un día que se pueda. Shipmates, we're just clearing the busy port of New Orleans and beginning our journey into the great American wilderness. Our vessel for this voyage is the proud sailing ship Columbia, the first American ship to carry the stars and stripes around the world. She's a 10-gun, three-masted merchant ship. It was back in 1787 that she first set sail from Boston Harbor, going all the way around the Horn and sailing onward to the Pacific Northwest, Hawaii, and China. In the three years it took us to make that journey, the Columbia was more than just a ship to us. She was our life and our home. Ford Midships is the main hatchway leading below decks, where you may see how we lived and worked on the high seas. The galley, captain, and crew's quarters are open for your inspection. For the rest of you, we invite you to stay up on deck, feel the wind in your face, and experience the wonders of this land we now know as America. American vessels to explore the Pacific Northwest. It was in 1792 that this very ship braved a sandbar and discovered a mighty river, which we named the Columbia, after the first ship to sail our waters.
Just ahead is the most treacherous part of our journey. That island off the starboard side often hides the scourge of the seas. Bloodthirsty pirates. They sometimes lie in wait to attack a passing ship such as ours and steal its bounty. Bowman, man the starboard foxhole cannon and prepare to fire a warning shot so as any curious pirates hide near the shore will know we are well armed. Those of you round the cannon best be stepping back, way back, or the cannon should be a mite loud, and the gunner's aim be a mite poor. Be ready to fire one! Fire one! should put some fear in them. Looks like we're safe for now, but I ask all crew and passengers to keep a weather eye out. We don't want the Jolly Roger flying above this fine ship. When we travel this far upriver, our ship often draws the attention of the local tribes. But look there, the chief has given us a sign of peace, which means we will be granted safe passage. has set up camp by the river. Since they have no written language, tribal leaders like that wise shaman on the block over there pass down their wisdom and knowledge through stories and songs. During our voyages, we sometimes stop to barter and trade with these local tribes. Villages like this one have helped many an explorer learn how to survive in this vast frontier. Sail for home. Hold taut the flying jib. Brace for a starboard tech. Cook and helpers stand by the box. Shipmates, if you haven't done so, it is a good time to visit the crew's quarters below decks to see how sailors of the 1790s lived and worked while on the high seas. The lower decks will be closing when we enter port. Those of you remaining on deck, keep a close eye on the riverbanks where you may be able to see moose, elk, and other wildlife.
Off the starboard are the last remains of an old shipwreck, rumored to carry a fortune in pirate's gold. It lies in Smuggler's Cove, a place of dark and dangerous deeds and secret midnight meetings. We'd best be sailing past this cove and back to civilization. on deck. Stand by to go ashore. Guard man aloft into the foot ropes. Hurl the top gallants. Down with the flying jib. Make ready the bow anchor. Stand by all lines. Stand by the bow line port side. Let go the bow anchor. Let go the cage. Crew it's been a pleasure serving with you aboard the sailing ship Columbia, the first ship to carry the star.